Warnings that humanity is damaging the global climate seem to make headlines every week. Forest fires, sea level rise, deforestation, floods, droughts, and famines. These catastrophic disasters fill us with shock and awe. It's easy to forget that natural disasters are nothing new, and that though we're changing the earth, we're not in control of it. In a display of raw power, the Pacific Island nation of Tonga experienced a tremendous volcanic eruption on January 15, 2022. Plumes of gases, steam, and ash surged upwards, contaminating the stratosphere, also known as the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha Pai eruption. It was the largest eruption in 30 years, according to experts. In this video, I'll explore this explosive phenomenon, asking if this colossal underwater volcanic eruption will affect the global climate, what happened, and what can we learn from such cataclysmic events. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of our latest videos. Located over 1,100 miles from New Zealand, cast adrift in the southern Pacific, this Polynesian kingdom isn't used to making headlines, but this tropical paradise is now the center of 2022's earliest catastrophe. The Tonga eruption is one of the biggest natural disasters in recent decades. Hundreds of times more powerful than the Hiroshima atomic bomb, the energy released by the fiery event is estimated to be equivalent to between 4 to 18 megatons of TNT according to NASA's Earth Observatory. In comparison, the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption in the United States released 24 megatons of energy, and Krakatoa, one of the biggest volcanic events in history, erupted with the tremendous forcing of 200 megatons in 1883. In fact, the Krakatoa eruption was so violent, it was heard over 3,000 miles away, causing temperatures in the northern hemisphere to drop by an average of 0.4 degrees Celsius, or 0.72 degrees Fahrenheit in the following years. So the Tonga eruption isn't nearly as potent as its predecessors, but it shouldn't be ignored. The eruption injected a huge cloud of ash and sulfur dioxide more than 25 miles into the atmosphere. For context, jetliners fly at 35,000 feet, a little under 7 miles above sea level. At such heights, the volcanic ash cloud could linger for years, above the influence of the jet stream. Sulfur dioxide, for instance, can react with water creating a hazy layer of gas to block out sunlight and cool the Earth. It's how many of Earth's prior eruptions altered the climate. Nor was that all the destruction. The underwater explosion also generated tsunami waves up to 15 meters high, which impacted more than 100,000 people across Tonga's roughly 170 islands. At least three people died in the initial eruption and tsunami, as hundreds more fled their homes. With no communication to the outside world, others found themselves blanketed in thick volcanic ash and debris with little explanation or help. But as aid agencies around the world mount their response, eyes are now turning to the long-term consequences of the eruption. Most pertinently, will this change the climate? And if so, how? First, contrary to popular belief, it's not volcanic ash that alters the climate. Ash particles are an actual physical shard of glass. They might be tiny, but they're also heavy. So the ash rains down soon after the eruption, carpeting the landscape. Instead, sulfur dioxide functions as a reverse greenhouse gas. Where carbon dioxide locks in heat, warming up the planet, sulfur dioxide does the opposite. The hazy blanket it creates blocks sunlight, cooling the Earth. To assess the level of damage, scientists estimated from satellite data the total sulfur dioxide mass from the eruption was 0.4 teragrams, or 400 million kilograms. Governments worldwide breathed a sigh of relief, as such measurements are well below what the scientists say could substantially shift the global climate. That's not to say climate change wasn't a real possibility. In 1991, the Mount Pinatubo eruption in the Philippines released 15 to 20 teragrams of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, resulting in a 0.6 degrees Celsius or 1 degree Fahrenheit drop in global temperatures over the subsequent year or more. Initial estimates appear to be positive. The Tonga eruption's impact on the climate is 10 times less than Pinatubo's. So should we even be worried at all? And in the face of a warming climate, is a cooling volcanic eruption even a bad thing? Here's where things get a little more complicated. To understand what's going on, let's recap how volcanoes form. Volcanoes typically occur at the borders between tectonic plates. These plates are like the cracked surface of an egg. Only instead of falling off, these monumental plates float and shift on a sea of magma deep below the Earth's surface. Like the ocean, this molten sea has currents, causing the plates to move, inch by inch over the millennia. As plates crash into one another, mountains form. As they slide and grind along each other's edge, earthquakes shake the ground. Volcanoes occur when plates are either moving towards or away from each other. Nowhere is that more evident than in the Ring of Fire, a horseshoe-shaped belt stretching around the entire Pacific coast of Asia, the Pacific Islands, and the Americas. 
Here, as the numerous plates crash and divide, the underlying magma is pushed up under tremendous pressure and force, producing eruptions unlike anywhere else on the planet. In fact, the four largest volcanic eruptions in the last 11,700 years all occurred in the Ring of Fire. And more than 350 of the Ring of Fire's volcanoes have been active in historical times. It's a dangerous region to live in, but also rich in the fertile soils and natural resources that tectonic activity provides. It's a bountiful opportunity, generating some of the world's greatest civilizations, but one which comes with terrible risks. For the Polynesian Islanders, the future is now a waiting game. As Eric Clemetti, associate professor of geosciences at Denison University put it, if the volcano decides that it's going to do a number of explosions and keeps on adding, that'll change things. Indeed, this accretive risk, involving even a series of smaller but substantial eruptions, could noticeably cool the climate. Using past eruptions as our metric, at most, we're likely to see less than half a degree in cooling, and the effects won't last forever. The impact of the Krakatoa eruption produced a cooling effect of 0.4 degrees Celsius. In the context of climate change, that puts global temperatures back to where they were in the mid-1980s, from over 1 degree today. Considering changes will last, at most, a few years, it's not substantial to reverse some of our effects, and it comes with significant loss of life. However, no matter what we decide, it doesn't matter. Events are out of our hands and in nature's. In all likelihood, nothing severe will occur in the Tonga region. Eruptions are common and rarely lead to ongoing catastrophes. But it does raise an important point. How do volcanoes influence the climate? And how does the Tonga eruption fit into this picture? To understand their role, we need to shift our perspective. Unlike human-made climate change, which occurs in the blink of geological time, volcanoes shape the climate over millions of years periodically releasing their noxious volcanic gases to turn up the heat, like a thermostat. Compared to biological processes, volcanism is a god of chance, random and purposeless. Their eruptions are governed only by the shifting pressures below and tectonics above. But even given these broad movements, our understanding of their long-term impact is minimal. Volcanic eruptions cause short-term climate change and contribute to natural climate variability, explains Georgi Stenchikov, a research professor with the Department of Environmental Sciences at Rutgers University. Not everyone agrees that their effects are confined to the short term. In one groundbreaking study published in 2016, global warming and cooling periods over the past 720 million years of Earth's history were linked to volcanic activity related to plate tectonic movements. They argued that while the rates of change in the volcanic emission are extremely slow and the amount of carbon dioxide produced by volcanoes are remarkably minor in comparison to modern human-induced emissions, yet these processes are capable of, over long time scales, driving dramatic changes in climate state. Far from the angry gods of fire and brimstone we see, volcanoes are actually methodical in plotting giants. Though they seem instantaneous to us, their eruptions are part of a patchwork, like those of the Ring of Fire. Indeed, as the team studies periods of Earth's warming, they notice an increase in volcanic eruptions. One example would be the Andes Mountains. They were formed as two tectonic plates met, pushing the oceanic plate down below the South American continental plate. Deep in that furnace, magma mixed with carbon from the Earth's crust, which erupted from the volcanoes into the atmosphere. Such periods produced sizable shifts in the Earth's climate. Temperature regions became tropical. Forests turned to sand, all to the beat of geological time. It's something of a warning to us today. Volcanoes may look powerful. Indeed, their blast is greater than anything we've created. But despite their fury, their effect is small and short. Even their lasting impact takes millennia to unfold. In contrast, the experts stress that the scale of human-induced climate change is far greater. Even worse, it's happening at a rate thousands of times quicker. Of the volcanic study, co-author Brian Horton concluded, overall, these results support a direct link between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the global state of Earth's climate. If we've learned anything from these past records, it is that continued output of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere will likely drive Earth to a greenhouse climate. It's a sobering assessment. Rather than being something to fear, volcanoes are a lesson in climate change, an example of what happens when you play with the thermostat. The Tonga eruption isn't likely to have any lasting impacts, not any we can currently perceive anyway. It may be part of a grander release of carbon dioxide, another scheme hatched in the chemistry beneath our feet. Or it may just be a brief release of pressure, Either way, it's a reminder of the power of the climate. It's hard to believe that a volcanic eruption producing an ash cloud more than a thousand miles in length could have no impact. That the emissions of every car, factory, and house result in a greater effect. Even so, the eruption will likely have a minor cooling effect over East Asia and the region for a couple of years. It may even weaken the Chinese monsoons. For the people in Tonga, however, life goes on. But as they pick up the pieces after the eruption, the larger threat of sea level rise is on the horizon. Hey, thanks for watching. Want to suggest a video or have something to say? 
Let us know in the comments section below. Check out our playlist for more videos like this one.